All right, so I built a team consisting entirely of OG Pokemon from my channel throughout the years, and I figure we gotta put these bad boys to work. If you've been around my channel for a while, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know which Pokemon you think of first when you think of my channel. As always, I really appreciate all the support you guys show on the channel with likes and comments and all that fun stuff. I truly don't think there's a cooler YouTube community out there, so we're going to keep it going with a nice Wi-Fi battle today. This one is a super fun match against a pretty interesting team. we got a couple of ghosty boys, honestly looking pretty dark overall. I uh, mean, some scary things like the Snorlax. So let's see if we can get the OG squad to put in the work that we know they can. So I'm gonna go ahead and lead off with the boy Reginald. My dude has been cooped up in the box for entirely too long. He comes out, he's gotta stretch out his weird little crab mushroom legs and get back into the swing of things here. Now, I wanna lead off with this mostly just because looking at their team, they don't have anything that can take a spore and I can kinda of try to get Reginald to uh, get some, some shenanigans going early. I know that if I can just disrupt a little bit with some sleep and then you know maybe just get some damage on something, Reginald's had himself quite the day. Uh, so I'm over here, just my weird gelatinous mushroom bouncing around, and I figured, you know what? Let's go ahead and get nice and sharp here. I'm gonna go for the swords dance. Uh, hoping that they do stay in, as it actually does. The clay doll is a pretty optimal Pokemon to be able to set up against. Um, I know that I can take an attack, obviously, with Focus Sash, and it's guaranteed now that I'm able to get some damage off. Uh, so I get that clean little plus two from the Swords Dance. Now I decide to go for the X Scissor, as they are actually gonna end up saving the clay doll for later, and unfortunately brings in the BBC. Of course, the Parasect isn't going to have the best time against a Dusknoir, so I figure, you know what, we're just going to try to get as much damage as possible. I can't really switch Parasect out at this point. Uh, to come back into Stealth Rock, I'm going to ruin my Focus Sash, so I figure, you know what, I'm going to do what I can against this Spooky Lad and just make sure that I can at least whittle it down to the point where it's easier to take care of later. Uh, because this is actually a Pokemon my team does not deal with too well. So he actually ends up carrying the Fire Punch. I'm absolutely fucking destroyed by that as I'm four times weak. You literally breathe on this thing with a hot breath and that thing gets knocked down to its Focus Sash. So the Fire Punch, of course, does knock me down. Uh, and I'm able to then go for the Neutral Bullet Seed, hoping for five hits. If I can get five hits, I can make some shit happen here. But Reginald says he got a little tired there, and that's fine. You know, he's... Look at these legs. They, they're fresh out of the PC box. They're skinny as hell. He's, he's already tired from just standing here. So, unfortunately, uh, I'm not able to pick up the KO here. As with him being faster, I don't really want to switch out. I do consider switching. I'm trying to save Parasect for, like, a free fodder switch in later. But I just decide to let this thing go down and get uh, a nice free switch in the Dust Noir later. But I was at least able to put the Clay Doll to sleep. Um, it's only burned one turn of sleep, plus I've whittled the Dust Noir down below half, which I like, like I said, is, you know, kind of an issue to my team. So, now with the free switch and I decide to bring in the absolute OG Paul. I come in looking confused, but ready, as Slowbro always kind of is. So, um, I decide just to go for the Scald. Now, this isn't the best matchup for me, but I know even if this thing does decide to go for some type of ghost move, um, I can likely kill it, switch out, get my regenerator, and it's like nothing happened. So... Uh, I go for the Scald, actually hoping it was going to be closer to a KO and potential burn to be able to pick it off. Um, or potentially catch something on a switch and get a little Scald burn, you never know. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't quite knock it out, but I did get lucky in that he actually did miss the Will-O-Wisp there. So, he is going to end up actually staying in here going for another Will-O-Wisp. I guess just wants to get the burn on Slowbro just because uh, this thing does kind of wall his team pretty nice and the chip damage is going to be pretty helpful. However, I don't really have anything else that wants to get burnt, so I decided to just stay in here, go for another Scald, and that is going to take care of the old BBC and his weird ghostly tail. So, that's pretty solid to get that thing out of here, and now with a free switch in, I get to see kind of what his direct answer is going to be to Slowbro. And there's actually a little bit of an interesting mind game going on here in that I didn't click Psychic, and that actually comes in handy because of the fact that he brings in the Seviper. So, I know that Seviper's best option is going to be something like Giga Drain, and even with Choice Specs, I know that I can take at least one. Uh, so I decide to stay in here. He does end up going for the Giga Drain, knocks me to a little bit below half, but this does allow me to throw a nice little Psychic. Now, a lot of the time, you don't see Slowbro carrying Psychic. Uh, I like to on this one, just for scenarios like this, that Stab Psychic is able to be uh, pretty handy, and that takes care of it. He probably was not expecting that, considering I didn't use it against the Dusknoir. Uh, so that works out pretty damn nice, and I am sitting at below half with Slowbro here. I know that this is going to be a good wall for me later on, uh, so I do want to switch out, get that regenerator ability, and give my boy Paul back some health. So now they're going to bring in the Banette, and this is a Pokemon you don't see too often. Shout out to my dude for using quite the interesting team. 
Um, so I don't really know what to expect from this thing. All I know is Paul doesn't really want to deal with it. I'm thinking potentially like switch into a Will-O-Wisp, but he's probably not going to go for that against the Slowbro. Um, and I decided to bring in the blue Teddy Milk. I'm talking blueberry milk out here. I just would like to get up my Stealth Rock, potentially paralyze some stuff and make my life a whole lot easier down the line as it ends up actually going for the knockoff there. So it knocks off right on my titties. I'm over here bouncing around. Um, no more leftovers for me, but I just decide now to go right for the Thunder Wave. I figure I could Thunder Wave and then get up a Stealth Rock, um, but unfortunately they make a nice play and go right back into the Clay Doll. So uh, with this thing sleeping, I'm actually not super worried about uh, really what this thing wants to do. So I figured, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna go right for a curse here, start yelling some profanities, and uh, with that plus one attack and defense, the mill tank is freaking unstoppable here. As they actually end up making a double switch, going to the Houndoom, predicting potentially a switch on my end. However, I just stay in and go for it. Um, the reason why I'm able to do this is because even though I'm not the scrappy ability, I know he's not gonna want to use the ghost against me, even though Body Slam is my only attacking move. Uh, so I kind of just figured, you know what, I'm going to go for it. So he goes for the Dark Pulse here. I'm able to live. However, I flinch, which absolutely ruins my day uh, because a Thunder Wave or a Body Slam off on this thing would have been super nice because Houndoom is quite a little bit of a difficult Pokemon for me to deal with. So the Hellhound is able to pick up the KO. And this is now turned into a sad day because there's now going to be a lack of calcium on the battlefield. So you hate to see that. However, I do get a switch into whatever I would like. And I'm thinking, you know, I have a couple options. Either I go into Choice Scarf Pincer, pretty much just to scare that thing out with a close combat, or I go into Muck. I decide to bring in Sup. He comes in saying, Sup. Um, I want to save the Pincer for the late game. It's looking like it's going to be kind of my win condition if I can make it happen here. So. Anytime you can get this healthy slimy boy in against a special attacker, you're gonna have a good time. So I decided to go right for a curse here. Um, I'm actually working with double curses on this team. Watch my profanity. Um, I go for the curse here, get that plus one attack, plus one defense. Now this thing is looking like an absolute unit with its natural special defensive bulk, plus that plus one on my defense. I'm looking unstoppable here. So Banette actually comes in and... I'm kind of worried about a Will-O-Wisp here. I would like to go for the Poison Jab for the really high chance of the Poison, but I figure I'm going to go for the Shadow Sneak before they have a chance to potentially uh, Will-O-Wisp me. That's going to do a whole bunch of damage there, and unfortunately I actually get Curse Bodied, uh, which is, you know, unfortunate. But uh, they just go for a knockoff. Actually, it doesn't actually carry the Will-O-Wisp. That is fine. I don't even need that Black Sludge anyway. I am a fucking huge pile of Sludge, so let's a little chip off the old Sludge. So... Uh, goes for another knockoff there, which kind of leads me to believe that this thing is choice somehow. Still don't really know what type of banat that thing is, but one thing I do know is that Rock Slide absolutely destroys it, and down it goes. So we got two Ghosty Boys down, and Muck is out here on a rampage. So now they decide to bring back in the Houndoom, and this thing is quite the issue still. I need to get some damage here. So I know I can take at least one, and I'm really hoping to not flinch again. A flinch would be horrible, but Sup says not today. I'm able to get the Poison Jab off. And I'm really hoping for that poison. This thing has the poison touch ability, plus with the high chance of poison uh, jab to get the poison as well. Unfortunately, I still don't get it, which is surprising. Fucking Muck gotta step it up here or spread that AIDS around a little better. Um, unfortunately, though, my Shadow Sneak is still disabled, which would have allowed me to take care of it. Uh, but the Bayonet is haunting me from the grave, and that is going to finish off the Muck. So, at least I was able to knock this thing down to one, which makes it real easy to take care of. And now all I really have to do is go into Choice Scarf Pincer. Um, there is a couple things they still have around that can stop this sweep from happening, but if I play my cards just right, Pinsir can make it happen. So, uh, I bring in Pinsir, he gets absolutely destroyed by some Stealth Rock, and I decide to just go for the X Scissor here. Of course, with this thing at 1 HP, anything would kill it. And I mostly just expect the Clay Doll to come in here, trying to catch me slipping on an Earthquake or a Close Combat. Luckily for me, they do end up switching into the Clay Doll. My dude is still sleeping, can't see shit, all the eyes are closed. Imagine... This is always funny to me. Imagine being a sleeping Pokemon being sent into an attack. You're just like, oh, oh, I'm back out again, and they're just whacked in the face by an X Scissor. And <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Absolute betrayal. Um, but of course, I just stand, go for another X Scissor here, as of course, anything switching in is going to have a decently bad time, as the last Pokemon left is going to be the Snorlax here. So, judging by that damage, I don't really want to stay in here and worry about this thing hitting me back as I know Pinsir is going to be able to finish off the uh, the late game sweep for me, hopefully. So, I decide I could either go into Paul or I could go into the Pussy. And I'm thinking, you know, Pussy's got these sweet sunglasses on. I can hit it with some pretty good specs damage. 
or I could get a switcheroo going. There's a couple different options, and I basically just need to whittle this Snorlax down to the point where I can easily pick it off later. That's easier said than done, though, because this fat asshole is always a menace to take care of. Um, but I go into the, the Persian here. He ends up going for the facade, as I have a couple different options here. I go for the switcheroo, and I give this thing a specs, and then I can easily predict this thing, or I go right for the damage and try to just whittle this thing down. I opt, fuck it, I'm going right for the hyper beam. I, I brought this putty for a reason. I'm going for that hyper beam. Um, unfortunately, does not quite pick up the KO, and to my surprise, it actually even has a Figgy Berry, which brings it up above half. So now, I've been absolutely outplayed here as he goes for a Recycle, gets that Berry right back, and I'm thinking, oh shit. I have got myself into quite the predicament here. Of course, the Putty has to recharge. I find that is often the case when I'm around. Giggity. Um, and that's able to finish me off with the Facade. So, down I go, but it's looking like I still have this thing in range for Pinsir to come in and do his Pinsir shit. Um, so I come in, of course I'm carrying the close combat. It's not quite stab, but the attack on Pinsir should be able uh, to pick this thing off at around half health. So I go right for the close combat, really kind of the only option I've got here, as he's going to actually end up switching that thing out, decides to save it for later, um, but they go into the Clay Doll, who unfortunately, have, after having taken an X-Scissor earlier, is going to be easily in range for the close combat to take care of it. So down goes the Clay Doll, who was asleep after setting up Stealth Rock freaking turn one, and that's... Shout out, to, shout out to Reginald, we still got shooters out here for you, buddy. And the bug gang is just making shit happen. So I get that moxie boost, which is amazing. Um, gotta love these these bugs that got that late game moxie sweep in them. It's honestly just amazing. So in comes the Hound Doom. Unfortunately for him, I am wearing a nice pretty scarf, which allows me to outspeed. And a close combat absolutely beats the shit out of that pupper. And all I've gotta say is sometimes you gotta respect the pincer. Right? You know, sometimes you learn the hard way, and that's the way it's gotta go. So the last Pokemon is gonna be that Snorlax who unfortunately is going to come in after me being plus two moxie boosted. It's going to be a very large punching bag, and one more close combat is going to take care of it. So this should be the end of the match, and we absolutely love to see Pinsir in his natural habitat, just pinching up a storm and getting that clean late game sweep. I've literally been using this exact Pinsir for, <laughs> like, the, since the start of Gen 4. Um, when I very first started making Wi-Fi Battle content. So he's absolutely got a special place in my heart, and he's the absolute GOAT. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.